Good morning, church. Good morning. Good to see everyone here today. And um, at this time where we're celebrating Jesus' arrival. And so this morning, I have a short message for you, and I pray that as the Holy Spirit will speak to you, and that we will take seriously what there is that God has for us, Jesus, the light of the world. So we we start. Today we are going to embark on a journey through scriptures to explore the profound significance of the arrival of Jesus, the light of the world. Our hearts resonate with the words of John 1, 4, and 5. Those are the two verses that I will be focusing on. <clears throat> it is reminding us that in him, him who is Jesus, was life. In him was life. And that light was the light of all mankind. It was Jesus coming into the world that we have life and light. John 1, 4 to 5 says, in him, that is in Jesus, in God, was life, and that light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. You remember when Mary was about to be delivered, there was no one to receive him. That was darkness. Did you recognize that? That was darkness. The, the nation did not know him, and they did not know that the light had come. Everyone said there was no room, no room. He was shut out. And today, we are shutting him out. Today, there is still darkness over the land, over our lives. There is darkness everywhere that we look. The nation and the world does not know the light has come. <clears throat> Today, we delve into the joyous celebration of the arrival of Jesus, the light of the world. It's joy. You, you know what it is to be in darkness? You can't see anything. It's dark. You can't see anything at all. You're groping in the dark. It's like being blind. You don't know where you're going. You can't see. You're stumbling in the dark. Jesus, the light of the world, he did not come for a few. He did not choose to come for a few. He came for all mankind, for every one of us, rich and poor, you know, black or white. He came for every one. And for that, every one of us have the opportunity to live in the light. And to live in the, in the light, we have to look to the light. The light came into the world to show us how to live. Remember, the light is Jesus. And he came into the world to show us how to live. And with the light, it changes everything. 
the light changes everything. If you are in the dark, when the light is switched on, you can see. We can see the little dirts in that corner there. We can see the light. When the light is turned on, we can see what we could not see. And Jesus came to show us the way. He said, he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. Do we want life? He said he came to give us life. And the great thing he said, not just life, but abundant life, not just light. So we're not just one step before the other. We, he came to give us a whole host. He came to give us life. And so we need to be seeking the light. We all have that opportunity. We have it. Do we take those opportunity? We let everything else fill our lives. We are so consumed with the things of this world that we fail to see the light and we continue to stumble in the dark. Remember, the light of the world. Fix your eyes on Jesus. When we fix our eyes on him, we cannot walk in darkness. So ask yourself, why am I in stress? Why am I going all through this? Because we are still in darkness. We are still in darkness. We are not giving ourselves to the light of the world. We are not obeying the light of the world. We are not listening to what the light of the world is saying to us. He said, come to me. Come to me. And he promised to give us all good things. Remember, he said, I am not just a shepherd. I am the good shepherd. He's giving us good things. The light shines on, on goodness. It shows the brightness. It shows what we could not see in the dark. He is the light of the world. The arrival of the light changes everything. We see initially the light become as a baby. Jesus came into the world and he took on the form of human through the virgin birth. Remember, his arrival was heralded by the angelic proclamation to the shepherds. Remember, the shepherds were in the field. They too were in darkness. They were there looking after their sheep and probably having a good chart huddled together. It was cold, don't know what they were doing. But they weren't thinking of the light. But then they heard and saw, heard this angelic voice speaking to them. And the message that came was, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I have bring you good news of great joy that will be to all people. He said, don't be afraid. I have bring you good news. They were in the dark and they were there talking to each other thinking that they were doing the best when they heard this wonderful angelic voice saying, and you could just imagine, they were startled, they were frightened, they were afraid. He said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because the light has come. When you are in, when we are in the dark, Many, many people are afraid of the dark and they want to see the light. Are you longing for the light? You don't need to long anymore. The light is here. Receive it. Embrace it. The light is here. He said, do not be afraid. I have bring you good news. Though there, this was good news for the world 
to know that there is no delay. Then they heard that good news. They thought, we've got to do something about this. We have heard something new. We have heard good news. Do we keep good news to ourselves? Some, some of us like to spread good news. Some of us like to turn the good news upside down and make it into a gossip. Good news, he said, you know. This was good news for the world to know. And so there's no delay. We shouldn't delay in spreading the good news. Christ, the light of the world, is come. When the shepherds heard it, you could just imagine after the angel had gone, they start talking to each other. What is this good news? What is this good news? I think, let's go and find out. Do we go and see what the good news is, or do we keep it to yourself? No, the shepherds, they immediately went out looking for that good news. And did they find it? Of course they did. They found the good news because the good news was Jesus. They went looking and they found. Are you looking for Jesus? You don't need to go far to look. He's right here. You know, they found the light of the world. They found Jesus. And when they did, what did they do? They presented him with gifts. If, when you find Jesus, you're presenting yourself to him. You know, and Jesus receives you. He receives us. You know, we are his gift. When we receive him, the shepherds, they found him and they gave him their gifts. Our gift to Jesus is ourself, our heart. Let's present ourselves to him. Let's give ourselves to him. He is the light of the world. He shines the light in our lives, and he changes our lives. You know, when those shepherds found Jesus, their lives were changed. They become givers. They become givers. So let's find Jesus. Is Jesus in your life today? Is the light shining in your light today? He is that light that is shining today. Do you want him to shine in your life today? Are you looking for the light? Do you want to find that light? Do you want to see your life better than it is today? Do you want to have the joy in your life today? Then receive the light. Do you want to live in the light? The light is not far from you. And you can make a start today. Because Jesus is always waiting. He's always there. And it's never too late to make a start. The light is here. Let the light shine. Let your light so shine, the word said, before men. When you receive Jesus, your light will shine. And the Heavenly Father be glorified, will be glorified. Let your light so shine before men that they may see. And when your light begin to shine, you are going to do what God says, and that will glorify the Father in heaven. It's never too late to receive the light. Jesus came into the world as the incarnate Christ in the flesh. He came in the flesh to bring us into the light, to know good and bad, to know good and evil, right and wrong. Jesus came in the light. It comes to shine 
light on, the, on those things that are not of his. So, and he came to show us what the good, what the right things are. When, when, when sin entered into the world, man became separated from God. You remember, <clears throat> initially, Adam and Eve was placed in the garden, and everything was beautiful. But when darkness came, it separates man from God. And we are separated from God because of our sins. And Jesus came, and he shed light on those things that are not right. He said, Adam, where are you? And he's saying the same thing to us today. Where are you? I am the light of the world. Where are you? That's what he's saying. He's calling us. Sin has separated us from God because of our disobedience. We have disobeyed God. And so our relationship with God was broken, broken, and we are lost. We don't think that doing good is what, is what God wants, and that is fine. It's more than doing good. You know, many people think, oh, if I, you know, if I do good, I'm all right for heaven, but I carry on doing whatever the world does. That's not what God calls us. He said, separate. We've got to separate ourselves. Darkness and light cannot go together. Okay. So our disobedience has separated us from our Heavenly Father. We were in darkness. We were heading for a lost eternity. That's where we were going when we got separated from God. But God loves us, his creation, and he was not willing that we should remain in the dark. And so he sends us Jesus, the light of the world. And Jesus has that power to transform us, to change us from darkness into light. And with his coming, with Jesus' coming, it has shown us the light and reconnect us to the Father. The arrival, his arrival, changes everything. Jesus coming into the world has changed everything. And we need to embrace the light of the world, Jesus. Jesus is not only the giver of physical life, and spiritual life. He is also the source. He is the source of life. And he's that source for our journey through life. He was a revealing light. He revealed what we are in comparison to him. That is, Jesus is so bright when you compare. Jesus is so bright that it should take the focus of us and focus on him. It's not about us. It's about him and what he's done for us. He came to give us light. Let us embrace it. Let us accept it. Let us receive that light. And let us go forth and shed the light that he's given. Share it, the light with him. When we have the person of the Lord Jesus Christ living and reigning in us, we can't help but shine. When Christ is living in us, we're going to shine. We are going to want to do what he does. We're going to want to go the places he goes. 
You know, Jesus walked among the poor. Jesus ate with the poor. Jesus was walking among his people. And that's what, when the light is in us, we will want to do and we will do. He is the guiding light, the light that shines in darkness. Remember, he is always with us. Darkness cannot extinguish the light, no matter how hard it's tried, but the light can extinguish the darkness. The Lord is the only remedy for mankind. He's the only one that can change darkness into light. Man may try, but they never will. They're trying to get to the moon and they're still trying. You know, Christ, God wants us to be where he places us, to shine the light. Shine the light wherever you go. You say, how can I shine the light? Be kind. Be compassionate. Be among the, the, the poor, the marginalized. You know, that's where, that's where God was. That's where Jesus was. Read the word. You see where Jesus was. You see the people he was with. You know, he didn't separate himself. He mixed with them because he wants them to know and to see the light. He wants us to do that. That's why he's given us the word. And if we don't get in the word, we won't know what we are to be doing. He wants us to share what he has given us when you know him. When you know him. And he said, come, come. Jesus took on flesh. Remember, he came like a human, like you and I. And he walk among, so he knows. He's not sitting in heaven somewhere and folding his arms and say, let's see what they're doing there. He walk among us. He is with us. He when he left this earth, he said, I'll send you the Holy Spirit. So we're not alone. He is with us. He's always there. So let's not think that God is somewhere in the back there, and I'm struggling. We're struggling because we fail to walk in the light. That's why we struggle. So we need to look to the Heavenly Father. We need to look to God, and we need to give him the glory. He came to give us light. Let's embrace the light. Through the incarnation, God began the process of salvation from sin making it possible for us to have relationship with him. God created us because he loves us. You know, when he created the world and he created Adam, God created Eve to be his companion. But another thing that really that I find so uh, joyful and uplifting, God used to come down at the cool, it says, at the cool of the day, and he communed with Adam and Eve. So when their relationship was broken, Jesus, God still came down, and he said, Adam, where are you? God loves me, and he loves you. He loves me, and he wants relationship with us. And although relationship was broken, he still came, and he seek us out. He's seeking you out. He's seeking me out. He said, where are you? And he came. He did not want that relationship to be broken, and so, hence, God sent Jesus to reunite us to him again. So he took on flesh and he dwelt amongst us. 
And through the incarnation, God began the process of salvation from sin, making it possible for humans to have full, full relationship with him. So again, God didn't want a half-hearted response. He wants a full relationship with us. Full relationship. Today, many are living in spiritual darkness. And they do not even realize it. We are living in dark days. You know, we're living in, we are stumbling. We are stumbling in the dark. And we don't even realize it. And we, we, we put it down to all sorts of different things. But the real reason is because we don't know God. Because we don't acknowledge him. Because we don't know that he is here with us. And he wants relationship with us. All the things that we go through, don't forget. Jesus knows it all, and he's going through it with us. But we fail to recognize it because we are so consumed with the world and what is going on in the world. We are more concerned about the world uh, than our own soul. We, 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 we don't realize that. He's coming back. He is coming back. And we better be ready. Because you know what? He says, I'm coming like a thief. Like a thief in the night. You don't know when the thief is coming. So you've got to be secure. I have got to be secure. I have got to know that my walk with the Lord is right. Not perfect. But he promised to be with me. And when we are walking in the light, he will show us when we are not going right. And that's what we are depending on him to guide our path. He is the light. He shines the light. There is, as I said, the world is in darkness. There is moral decline. The behavior of what is going on in the world today, there is little or no morality at all. And it starts from the top, or government right down. Where is the moral in their living? You know, there's cheating, there's lying, there are all sorts of things, you know, and everyone is looking for themselves. Yeah, they're not caring about the people. They, they only want to be in power. And being in power, they are destroying the nation. And unfortunately, we are walking in darkness and we don't realize it. We need to wake up, church. We need to wake up. Jesus is coming. We got to wake up. The light is coming. The light is shining. Open our eyes. Let us see the light. There is political unrest, not only in this country, but throughout the world. There is unrest. There is f fighting. There is war. There is selfishness. No one wants to listen. Everyone wants to do what pleases them. The Bible tells us that everyone does what please them in their own eyes. Wake up church. As a church, we need to move forward. We should be calling the shots, not them calling the shots. Unfortunately, we sit back and allow them to do it for us. The light is shining. Please walk in the light. There is social decline. And there is spiritual decay. We are not, as children of God, walking as children of God. We, 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 we 
quickly get ourselves drawn into the things of this world. We don't stand up. We, we are peculiar people. We are supposed to stand out, not stand in. But that's what we do. We, do, we want a peaceful life. And so we are going to agree with something we know is not right. And it starts with our children. And we allow our children to dictate to us what we do. Parents, wake up. You're going to give an account one day because God is going to call you to account. What did you do? What did you do? Speak with your children. Reason things out with them. It's not everything they do is acceptable. We are not living in a world that is in light. We are living in darkness. We are the light. Let us be the light for ourselves, our children, and wherever we go. You know, teach your children. The Bible said, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Train them up. It starts from their youth. You know, and don't, don't, don't think that, um, you know, they are too small. Somebody sent me a, a, a clip this morning, and it made me smile, but it make, also made me think, don't think that a child is too young to understand. And the clip was, um, it, it's a child, it doesn't look more than maybe four or five. And um, the parents were going shopping, and the little boy said, um, I am, he said, he said, oh, I feel like I have a fever. So his father said to him, come, let me. So he checked him out and he said, yeah, you do feel hot. Yeah. You know what, I'll tell you what. You stay with grandma and I will, um, and we will go shopping. And when we come back, we'll collect you this evening. And the, the, the child said, no, I don't have fever anymore. Thank you, God. I, <laughs> and I thought, this child is smart. You know, he wants to go. And so, but what, 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 what cheered my heart was he said, thank you, God, I'm better. You know, he first turned to God. That's what we need to do. We first need to look up and give God the glory and give thanks. So, you know, let's walk in the light, my brothers and sisters. Let's walk in the light. Um, the difference um, with, with all of these things is that there are many lights all over the world and they are shining like stars in the night sky. There are many, many lights. And where are they? These lights, they are men and women, boys and girls who have repented of their sins and visited and invited Jesus Christ into their lives as Lord and Savior. So we are stars, or we should be the stars that are shining. And as I said, we're never too young. There's a song that says we're not, we're not too young to come to Jesus, for he loves a little child. So no one is too young or too old to come. Don't wait till you're old to come. Come while it is day, for the night comes when no one can see. Darkness comes, and we, the more the darkness comes, and the more your, your mind, your life is filled with darkness, it is very, very difficult for you to break through. The light is shining. Don't let the light shine in vain. 
Because whatever you do, the darkness cannot put the light out. The light is going to stand. It's going to shine. So we are the stars that shine. Let us shine like the stars that God made us to, to shine. My, um, may the life and light of the, Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ shine forth in your life, my life, and we stay close to him and shine in the light. We have to stay close to him. We have to allow God to rule in our hearts. We, we have to learn to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Because if we don't listen, we're not going to hear. If we don't look, we're not going to see. We get consumed with all what is going on around us. You know, um, Christmas, everyone gets get so bothered about Christmas in the sense that it's the things that they can buy the things that are around them. Nobody, shouldn't say, no one, they don't think of Jesus. <coughs> Sorry. And what we forget is that he's a giver of all the things around us. Amen. So wh where, where is he in the midst of all this? Where is he? What have we done? We get so bothered to get a present for this one, that one. Have you not received the present that God gives us? Jesus. Jesus. So let's think. As I was saying to Margaret earlier today, when we were out there, that, you know, we get so overwhelmed and exhausted with getting presents and we get presents that people don't want. Presents that people, they look at it on the day and it's put in a corner, never to be seen again. Think, men and women, think. I'm giving a present to someone. Am I giving it just because I think I should do it? Or is it given because that person needs it? Let's stop wasting money on wasteless, useless things. I'm not going to be upset if I don't get a present. I have the present that I need. I have the present that I need. So I give God thanks. I am alive. God is good. God is good. Let's praise him, you know, and let's stop be like the world. That is worldly thinking. So think, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Yes. Receive Jesus, and you have the greatest present in the world. Receive him. So, so as I said, we are the stars that shine. And may the life and light of, of, of our Lord Jesus Christ shine forth in our lives and stay close to him and shine the light. Let us stay close to him. Let us shine the light. He, we are his mouthpiece down here. Let's use our mouth for the right things. Let's talk about Jesus wherever we go and not just talk about him. Let's be Jesus. Let's be Jesus. Through the incarnation, God began the process of salvation from sin, making it possible for humans to have full relationship with him. And when we have full relationship with him, that's our way to heaven. I know all of us here want to be seen when we stand before the great white throne. But if we do not repent, if we do not turn from our sins, if we do not walk in the light, he's going to say, I never know you. I never know you. 
I don't want to hear my Savior say to me, I never know you. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Be faithful, brothers and sisters. Let us be faithful. Walk as he directs us. He didn't say to us, once you, I, you receive me, your life is going to be one play, play, smooth ride. He says you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome. And I have overcome, you will overcome. He said, I'll get you to the other side. Stay strong. Be faithful. So let's believe what God tells us. You know, and let's follow. You, you have been, many of us have been through difficult times and we came through them. And when we look back, we say, thank you, God. You brought me through. You know, it says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The light is that joy that comes in the morning. So don't be discouraged if you have some difficult times because it is teaching us something. Let's learn from it what is teaching us. The light is still shining. When, when we see what God has done for us, in spite of our rebellion, you know, we have rebelled. To bring us back to himself, my question is, where's the gratitude? We have rebelled. And God still said, you know, I love these, my people too much. I have to do something to bring them back. Are we thankful? How thankful are we? Yeah. How do we show our gratitude? Do we carry on business as usual? Are we stopped to say thank you, God, for saving me? Thank you for giving me life. What do we do? Or do we, oh well, it's just another thing, and we don't even stop to think what God has done for us. We should be making every day one of praise and thankfulness. Knowing that Jesus is the light of the world, and he is living in our lives and that we should be shining for him. And we can do this by obeying him and be his hands and feet wherever we go. He is the light of the world. And if we are prepared to do his bidding, we will never be ashamed because he said he'll not put us to shame. And we don't have to be a, a theologian to love people. We don't have to be a theologian to praise God. Come just as you are, just as you are, and praise him. We are made for a purpose. The purpose is to serve him and to use what he's given. You know, he, he, he has given us gifts. He didn't just say, there you are, get on with it. He gives us and he gives us and he gives us again and again. And when we, when, when we fall down, he lifts us up. You know, when, when we feel discouraged, he encourages us. He plays people in our life. He's the light. He's the light. And he wants the light to be shining. And so when we hit a dark patch, he shines the light in us. He sends people to encourage us. Do we, do we think, do we notice or do we think, 
oh, this is the light. I'm sure many of us don't. And say, this is the light of Jesus here. The light of she- Jesus shines through in many ways. We need to be looking to the light. If we look, we will find, he said, seek, and you will find. You will find the light is shining. But we don't see the light because we are so consumed with the darkness around us that we do not see the light. Those are lights. You know, you have a phone call. Sometimes you're going through something hard to find. You get a call and it shares you. If we thought this is the light of Jesus shining through, we don't. We just take it for granted. Let us wake up and start recognizing the light. Let us shine for Jesus. He loves us and he is faithful. He is faithful. So let us not despise the light. Those little things, they are little lights shining through. Let's let's begin to recognize the light of Jesus shining through. And so let us be filled with gratitude for the gift of Jesus. If God didn't love us, he wouldn't do what he's done for us. Let us begin to appreciate God. Let us begin to give him thanks daily, everything, every step, give him thanks. You know, every move, give him thanks. Give him thanks for food, for shelter, for clothing, for the people around us. Thank God for them. They are the the stars that are shining in our lives, but we don't recognize it. We just take it for granted, you know. We need to start focusing on the light, Jesus, the light of the world. Um, This Christmas season, let us carry the light within, within us, and radiate it to the world, because we are living in a world that desperately needs hope and salvation. Let us be, each one of us, we have a message that we can take to the nation, you know? We, can, we cannot change the world, but one person can help to change, make a difference. Ask God, what is the difference I can make through you? Not in my strength. I cannot do it, but through Christ, I can do anything. And so it's asking God, what is my assignment in this Christmas to shine the light? You are the light, and I want to shine for you. What is my special assignment in shining the light this Christmas? to encourage everyone, Jesus is alive. He came as a baby, but he's no longer a baby. And he's that light that is shining in me. Reach out to someone and shine the light. Let them know Jesus saves. And Jesus is calling on us to shine that light. Um, And so, as I'm about to finish, I am challenging you today. I'm challenging each of you to embrace the light in a way that transforms not only your life, but the life of those around us. How are we going to do it? Let us be the beacon of hope, love, and grace, 
shining brightly in a world that is often walking in darkness. Let us be that light. As I said before, I challenge you. Will you be that light? Will you think, what can I do? And there's so much we can do. You know, God did not just give us one narrow path. He gave us many things so that no one can say, I don't know what to do or I can't do this. He has given us a pathway to go. First, accept him. Then, the next is continue in, his, in, the, in your walk with him. And then begin to serve him in other ways. We are servant of the Most High God. And he has given us the tools. And if we have the tool and we don't use it, then it will stay in the corner. The tool is the word of God. It is the word of God. Read it. What is he saying? What is God saying to me? Jesus came to give light. He is the light. Remember, he is not a light, but the light. Amen. You know? So, don't see the other lights. The world has little lights shining, but they are light that is leading us down a dark path. We follow that light, but at the end is darkness. When you follow the light of God, there is no darkness. No darkness. Jesus, remember, Jesus, the light of the world. This Christmas, let the light change your life and change my life in areas that needs changing, that there's a full beam of the light shining through. Let us love, because love is of God. And with the light shining, we can love. We can learn to love and love with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. Let's put do away with those things that are not of God. You know, we, we are living in an immoral world that needs to be changed. But as I say, one person can't change it, but God can change everything. And so let's, let's pray. Let's give God the glory. And let's thank God for sending Jesus as a baby. That Jesus went through all what we are going through at times. Nothing is immune to him. And he overcame. And he said, I have overcome. You will overcome. So don't get discouraged. Just trust. And obey God. Because you will overcome. And as I said, let's go out and shine the light, that light, Jesus, light of the world. So um, as I conclude, I'll just pray and ask God to help us to shine the light. So we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for revealing to us Jesus, the light of the world, and for dispelling the darkness so that we can walk in the light. Father, we pour out our gratitude to you and thank you for being our guiding light. Help us to shine the light wherever we go. Thank you that you are the light of the world. Amen. Amen.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>